So, all right. In the last video, we were successfully able to set up the server as well as it was running on port 5000, which we defined right over here. So from this video, we will be connecting with our database and I have created a file in our app config folder in our config folder that is db.js, which is currently completely empty. So now in order to connect with the database, we have already brought in this Mongoose, Mongoose package. But before doing that, I want to simply quit the server and clear this window out and install a dependency uh, to run our application because each time when you make any change in our application in, uh, in any of the file, we have to restart the server again by writing those commands and this is which is kind of pain in the ass but i really don't like that way so you can install that thing by npm install dash g and if you're a mac user append sudo at the beginning of this line and that is node mod this will constantly keep a watch on a server whether the file is changed or not so I have already installed and you can simply write this command to install the dependency and now if I run this server to run the server I will simply write node mod over here so now the server is started now if I make any change it over here and press save this will restart the server again and which is kind of handy for us so I'm gonna quickly quit the server because I will be using this terminal window to install other dependencies which will require later in our application but for now uh, to run the server I'm using my terminal over here and which is currently in the server folder so I will simply write node mon and it will spin up the server over there now next thing is like we have to if you have already installed mongodb in our in your local machine that is okay uh, if you're not there are a couple of video tutorials out there to install mongodb in your computer so I have already installed mongodb in my computer and to run that mongodb terminal I have to simply write mongod mongo and this will start this mongodb server in my computer and now if I simply write mongo it will start a mongo client so if you check that out that one connection has been made just to this mongo daemon uh, from this mongo client which is specified over here mongodb internal client so now next thing is to go and simply connect with our database so I am going to firstly go to this database file which I have created and for that I will simply write module.exports equal to oh sorry it is module not module yeah module.exports I'm gonna create a database variable over here and for local machine you have to simply write mongo and local host and mongodb by default run on port 27017 and after that you can write the name of the database which are, which in our case is authentication app and i'm gonna also specify a key secret you can specify any you can specify anything but for me i'll simply keep it simple your secret and now if i save you can simply see that again this node mod has been started so this is constantly keeping our eye on this root directory if any file is changed it will automatically spin up the server again so now uh, here i'm gonna connect with the database and to connect with the database i will simply write mongoose.connect start connect and after that i'll pass this database object so firstly we, to pass that object we have to bring in the database object and that is config firstly we have to specify a variable that is config which is equal to require and we are going to our current directory config folder then database and we have already brought in successfully brought in this object which we are exporting it in the database file so now to connect with the database we have to simply put that database object over here so for that config dot 
now we have database it over here and I'm gonna pass an option that is use new URL parser that is I'll set it to true and after that it will give a callback after successful connection so which can which we can catch it by then method and then it will send back up callback function I'll say simply console I'll simply console.log database connected successfully and I'm gonna give this a space and after that I'll simply write config database and if in case of any error I'm simply catching that error which will give an error object back and it is console.log I'll throw that error back so now if I save and if I see that over here we have we don't have any we have this error we are getting this error Earlier it was it, it was successful it was able to successfully connect with our database with this command only but now we have to do something else and to do that we have to simply use we have to set use create index true so mongodb configuration and after that I will simply write mongoos dot set use create index and I'll set it to true now if I save this file we won't get any error and our portal will be started successfully holy crap this is getting error invalid connection string so let me go and quickly fix that out invalid connection string mongo localhost yeah sorry it will be mongodb now if i save we won't get any error now we are successful in that mongodb database has been connected successfully i made this mistake and you can simply ignore this instead of this mongo it should be mongodb so now if i save everything worked fine connection with the database has been made successfully so now let's go and create some other stuff in our models directory so first model which I'll be using is user.js which will be a simple user who will log in our application and user the user of the application. So to create that model we have to firstly bring in the mongoose module. So mongoose equal to require mongoose. It will bring in the mongoose. Then after that we will be also using bcrypt to hash the password so for that const bcrypt equal to require and which will be bcrypt.js then after that const I have also installed unique validator so simply I'll write to bring that in unique validator To separate the users from the other other users where email should be unique or the username should be unique kind of stuff so I'm bringing this module in here so now we have to define user schema so for that const user schema equal to mongoose dot schema and which is an object here we'll be specifying all the properties so first one will be the name of the user and which will be of type string and required equal to true and the second one will be email address and which will be type again I'm just quickly copy this out so that I don't have to type it again and again and one thing you have to specify here that is put this unique equal to true and 
after that index also set it to true in order to make the registered users email unique user name after that and that will be type of string and required equal to true as well as this username should be unique so unique should be true so in this way we are able to define the schema then we have something else that is called password password field sorry i made mistakes and which will be simply a string of the characters then i'll be also using const contact and if you want it unique you can put that thing put these thread and put these things over here again so in my case i'll be using contact and i'll remove this unique true because a user can use multiple number of contact numbers then to export this thing first of all we will say user schema dot plugin and unique validator which we have initialized so this will throw out the error if in case this email is not unique or the username is not unique after that i will simply say const user equal to module dot exports so in order to use this model outside of this file also so we are simply exporting this object mongoose dot model and after that this user has a user schema so now i'm going to define couple of uh, other functions related to this user schema but not now for that i will be going this users route uh, firstly i'm going to go to this routes file so in my routes directory just to create a route for the only for the users so i'm simply write users.js i'm creating this new file which is currently empty and i'm gonna bring in some modules over here so that is const firstly we need express express equal to require express and after that const router which will exp which is a part of express router and router and this will be capital R I have made this mistake several times so now I remember this now I'll be also bringing passport uh, which will be using require and after that I will simply use passport then i will be also bringing jwt because we are sending back the json web tokens when the user is authenticated tokens jwt equal to require json sorry web token so we have successfully brought in json web tokens also after that i'm bringing in user schema const user equal to require and we are bringing the user schema from models directory not from here to up models then user so we have brought in the user schema then after that i will be also bringing the database also so const config equal to require and that will go to one up then go to config folder then database we have brought in all the dependencies which will be requiring it over here and before doing anything before bringing this route in this app.js i want to quickly export something which we'll be using in our application so module.exports and router so whatever this router we have initialized over here we are just exporting that router over here now i'm going to going to go to this app.js file in which i will be bringing in the user routes so to bring in the user routes i will simply write 
rename the user routes const users require and we have we have to go to in current directories routes and then bring in the users and if i save this file we won't get any error that means we have successfully brought in the user routes now we have to simply say if we are interacting with the api i just want to uh, specify the path by api users so simply app.use and api slash users then if any route touches this thing we'll forward that request to this users file so now if i simply go and create a route so router dot get which is a simply get method just to test that thing so it is a simple get request so profile and we should take request and then response and i'm just simply just to test this out return press.json and that is username that is test simply and now if i say we don't have any break so after that if i go to simply run api slash users and if i send this request we'll get this cannot get api users okay so why yeah api users slash profile if i send this thing we are getting this username so we are re here we are redirecting the user uh, the the request to this page where the where we have this route so in the same way i'm gonna simply uh, create a first one is the register route so the registration as far we know that it is a post request so we simply go for post register and we should take a register response and if i simply return or instead we simply return this request dot body okay it is an object okay so now quickly test this out what we get from this thing this is a simple just for the checking what we are getting or what we are getting from there so this is the register route i'm gonna simply this is a post request so if i go and click it over here register and in body i'll go for the raw and instead of this text i'll simply send this username and since it's a json object so make sure you enclose this thing and double quotes password and so far we haven't touched with anything with this schema we are not storing anything just this is for the test and now if i send this request we get the whole request whatever we have the request it request over here in the body of the request we are sending back so i'm gonna quickly cut this out that means our api has been started working so i'm going to this users model now i will initialize a couple of functions which are related to the user so first one is we need to find the user by id and for that module dot exports dot get user by id it is a function and which will throw back or which will take a id as well as a callback so this is just to find the user from the database using its id and you are using the user models which we have user schema which we have it over here so for that user find by id method which is a mongodb inbuilt where we pass the id and which will give the callback so far we have brought in this function this next function is to find the username user by its username module.exports get user by 
username which is again a function and it takes a username and then also takes a callback and I'll tell you what callback means in the just minute just a moment so firstly we have initialized this query and this is query which will be like username um, which is equal to this past username and after that we'll pass this query to this users schema find one method and we will pass this query and it will also will pass this callback if that user is found that callback will be passed then i am gonna use this again also to register the user and i will simply use module dot exports dot add user function the new user object which will be sending while registration which will contain the credentials of the user so first one will be like uh, i have to hash his password so bcrypt and generate salt and after that it will have a number of rounds how many times we want to hash that password then error if in any case of error otherwise it will return the salt back firstly we want to bcrypt that password so bcrypt dot make hash hash function new user dot password and we'll pass that salt object which we have passed it from over here and then also if any case of error otherwise it will send the hash back now if i if there is any kind of error then it will return error otherwise new user dot password equal to hash so and after that new user dot save and which will be a callback back again so basically this line of code is doing like we are bringing that new user object over here and now we are generating the number of rounds of salts over here and for, for the documentation you can go to the node npm package website and you can check about this thing how does it work but here we are sending the salt and then the decrypt and here we again pass the new user's password and which we want to specify the salt it over here and then we have to hash that thing over. so this uh, this will hash the password of the user so after that one more thing is when the user logs in we need to check that password so which will be compare password method so which will be like module dot exports dot compare password equal to function and which will be like here password hash We'll pass that hash over here and again the callback and now we will check with the bcrypt again so bcrypt compare and here we'll pass that password whatever we have brought in and we'll compare it with the hash that is this if error is if there is any error otherwise is match otherwise it will match the password and now we will send that call back if error, in case of any error we'll send back this throw error and yeah one more thing that says not like we don't have to return this error we have to throw error over here and the same way if the password is matching then the call back will be called and which will send back error will be null and is match will be true so in this way we are successfully able to 
uh, compare the password i'll tell you i'll show you it in a quickly in a actions in, in a moment so now i have to go and grab the request object because we have to bring the user first uh, we have to so to we have already brought in this user scheme and we can specify that thing over here so let new user equal to new user and it will is it will take an object so we have name name over here request dot body and name is coming from the request dot body and that will be the name field and the second field is the username and which will be again request dot body dot username after that we have email field so for that request dot body dot email field and one more thing we were having name email username password and contact contact this is request dot body dot contact yeah contact and last thing is password request on body dot password so in this way we are able to create a user but now before the create before the creation of this user to call this we have to call this function to be encrypt the uh, to encrypt the password so we have to call this method and this pcrypt is simply converting a password into the password field uh, like uh, masking our password with some algorithm of a hash so we'll simply write use that user dot now we have access to this we have access to these methods so simply we'll write add user and we'll pass that user object and after it I'll have a callback that is user that thing is successfully done and if in case of any error we'll simply return some response so for that let message I'll tell you in a moment why we are using this part not this thing yeah semicolon if there's any error dot errors dot username then message will be username is already taken if there's any error regarding to this email email validation And we'll simply add this message to this part and I'll give some space because I don't want to give email already exists and we'll return that response back so return press dot JSON and in this JSON object I'll say success equal to false and message will be mess sorry this will be a message only but if there's no error then we are we'll go to this else block and we'll simply return this response return press dot json and the success will be and successful which we can use front end of any application you can bind this application with any either view or anything else whatever you feel like and if I check that out so far we are not getting any error so now let's go and quickly create this user so we have already username and password i'm simply gonna 
one two three four five six seven eight that is a super secret password i'm gonna use code book inc as a username then name will be this code book inc and we had email field i'll tell you what will happen codebook.com info at codebook.com as well as we were also accepting contact from the body and which is a text field 636053514 so once I it is done I'll send this thing and we get error the user is not defined yeah so why is this happening is let new user because this is referencing the user schema so this was a kind of mistake because this is a new user schema we are using it over here so now if I send back send this request user registration is successful now if I send this again we'll get this error the username is already token so this kind of stuff is done from this part uh, from this part this validator is validating the user schema on the basis of the credentials so so far we have authentic we, we haven't done the authentication part we have registered the user successfully so now we have to go and simply create another route and that is again it will be router dot post request which will be the login and it will take request response and here I will simply get the request the username object username and password const user name equal to request dot body dot username and const password so now we have already done this part here we have touched most of the thing because we will be sending this username here and we'll get back the user if there is any user there so now use that user dot get username by username method and here I'll pass this username first and if there's any error we'll simply return error otherwise we'll return the user so this this function is basically referencing referencing this callback which we are passing it over here and so if any case of error will throw error otherwise if not user will simply return res.json and success will be false and message will be user not found so we have written this user if there's no error there, there's no user is found but if any user is there then we will simply compare his password so we'll use this compare password function which we have just created it over here this compare password and this will this will use this user password which we are getting from the request of the body so this is quite little bit complicated otherwise it, it is not basically so I'll send back that password object which we have from which we have generated over here and after that it will give a callback uh, we'll get this user object this user object and we'll send that user user's password and if there's error or is match
then if match is there then it will be true and if there's any error then it will throw that error back so same thing if error then throw error if is match then we have to simply send the token send the token of the authentication that that the user is authenticated successfully in over here so simply we'll write const token and we have brought jwt right so we we have to sign that token first and it will take the object and i'll show you the validity of the token which we will be getting so first one we'll be simply type the user okay and type will be user and whatever the data you want to pass in so first of all i'll simply pass the data that is id field and this is simply an underscore id user dot underscore id and in mongodb this id field is like attached with this underscore at the beginning so you can simply use that thing over here also see and user dot username and name will be user dot name field and after that it will take email user dot email contact field contact which is user dot contact actually and after that we will be also assigning this part that is so this will be in the payload of the data then we'll be also assigning this part that is simply config dot secret so whatever we have secret over here and we'll also assign this thing yeah i'm gonna get rid of rid of this extra parameter and expires in method and i'll give you give it for a week that is six zero four eight zero double zero so basically it is taking up for a week like it's a time in a millisecond for one week time in milliseconds and then after that we'll return that response plus we'll return res.json and success will be true token will be jwt and after that we'll attach our token which we have created over here so this token will be attached to attached over here and i'll simply leave this over here else if there is nothing like if there's no error also and no match is also found we'll simply return this response instead of sending this token i'll send this message object that is wrong password now if i save this part hope there's no error yeah there's no error and instead of registration i'll go to new request and create this copy this url paste it over here instead of registration it will be login and if I simply uh, copy this part and application slash JSON. Now if I send this thing back, we get the success token successfully. So now we have successfully authenticated the user and we are getting this token. And with token, this token will be to verify the validity of this token, you can go to this uh, look link that is jwt.io and here you can copy and paste that token so for that simply just copy this token paste it over here and here we have this token 
So this is basically the assignment of the token date when the token was assigned and this expiration date of the token is also there as well as whatever the credentials we have passed in over here is in the data object of that token. And if I try to change any of them, then the whole token will be invalid. Let's say if I get rid of this thing, then the token will be invalid. So we are, we can check the, we can verify this token over here in this jw3.io page. So we are successfully now able to authenticate the user. So that's basically it. If you like the content of the video, you can simply subscribe to my channel and share our videos with those guys who are just want to get started with the coding. I'll see you in the next video, how we can create the admin schema and we can check the, check the credentials and we can log in the user on the basis of their role type.